what they do. You know, some of the things that um, we talk about with a lot of different veterans, you know, an example of that would be that, you know, a veteran has a rank, or, you know, in the military, you get, you get a rank, and then, you, you know, there are certain people that respect you, and you have this authority, and then all of a sudden you kind of come out, and, like, there no one respects you anymore. And, you know, you don't see that. It's, it, there's that transition, and, um, you know, there's, uh, you know, you're kind of, there's some structural things that you are required to do while you're in, all of a sudden you're out and you're free, and it's a, it's a hard transition for a lot of guys. So we're trying to, you know, give uh, veterans a way to re-engage and, um, you know, be able to actually fight the fight here at home that we see a lot of things we are working to do. Um, the other thing that, that one of our major policy things that we're doing right now is we're trying to give veterans choice when it comes to uh, their health care. So um, not every veteran um, uses the VA system, but a lot of them do. Um, and so for the, the ones that don't have their private health care through their work or something like that, that are in, they're in the VA system, what we're trying to do in our, uh, some of the policy initiatives that, initiatives that we have, we did just pass, um, some of you guys got the, the Veterans Choice card. I don't know if anybody seen those come across. Um, we fought for that legislation last year because, you know, it's really odd that, you know, even illegals get health care that's better than veterans. It's unbelievable. You know, whereas a veteran, in, in a lot of times, can only have the, the VA as a choice, you know, an illegal person can go anywhere. <laughs> Does that make any sense? It's amazing, right? So, you know, what, you know, what, and then, then we had like the 40 veterans that died in Arizona, you know, waiting to get taken care of. But it's just outrageous. You know, I mean, it, it motivates so many of us every day to go to work to, to, to fight this fight. And uh, we have tons of uh, volunteers across the, the state and across the country that work with us. We are in 22 states. I think 22 states. We're in 22 states now. Um, I can tell you that I'm very proud to be the, the, the director here in Ohio. And we're actually the top in the country here in Ohio. And in fact, that... When you look at what we're able to accomplish, thankfully, for the wonderful staff that we have here, and that we just have a tremendous staff here, um, and I'm going to brag on our staff just a little bit. Um, we actually um, have done so well that we have a certain level of what we call Tier 1 states, and our production is almost what all those other ones are combined. That's how good a staff we have here. I mean, the talent that I've been fortunate to pick up on my team here is just tremendous, and uh, I'm really thankful for them. And so we're out fighting the fight, and we have a lot of people in Ohio across the state. Uh, we work with all kinds of people, not just veterans. We, we like veterans to engage and give them an opportunity to participate with us, but it's not just as it's veteran family members. We have tons of family members. We have tons of uh, young patriotic Americans that just want to participate with us. So our, our whole network is built up of all kinds of people, and I have to say that across the state, of Ohio right now, as far as who represents conservatives, we're probably the number one group in the state. And uh, we have the support from uh, conservative leaders, we work with the pro-life groups, we work with um, liberty groups, um, and it's unusual because we've worked really hard to bring a lot of the different groups together so that we can actually be more effective. Because when you're divided, you know, that's what they really try to do to us a lot of times, right? They try to divide us, uh, conservatives, so that way we can, uh, are not as effective. But we're, you know, at Concerned Vets, we're out there fighting the fight, and we're trying to, you know, make a difference, and we are. I mean, it's very unusual that we can get something out, out of the Capitol. We even got uh, President Obama to sign that choice card, which was very unusual. We're following that up, because what happened with that was that if you lived farther than 40 miles away, and this we see this a lot in Ohio, actually, up in the Toledo area, where if, if they have, if somebody has cancer or something, a veteran has cancer, they got to go for cancer treatments. They got to go all the way to Ann Arbor to get taken care of. When they pass a brand new cancer center at the University of Toledo, but they can't go there. Then they, then they get on a van, they get loaded up with maybe nine other veterans going for cancer treatment, spend their time driving up to uh, Ann Arbor. If the first one gets their treatment, they have to wait for the last person to get done while they're still sick. They're with nobody there with them to help them. They have to wait to get back on the bus till the last person is done, and then come back. Is that the way we treat veterans? I mean, I tell you, it just it just fries me. You know, I get so angry about it. Um, and, and so, um, so we got the we got the bill passed last year where if it was if you were farther than 40 miles away, you could go somewhere local. 
Um, also, that if you had to wait more than 14 days to get an appointment, that you could go somewhere local. But what does the bureaucracy do? Then they start manipulating it, right? So now all of a sudden, if you, uh, for example, are in uh, the Toledo area or in Finley, and you uh, have a clinic that's close to you, but maybe you need something done with your eyes. Well, if they don't do eyes, right, then you would think, well, so then there's not something available for me. That means that, you know, I can, um, you know, go somewhere local. Oh, no, no, but because there's a clinic there, even though they don't do what you want, it's within 40 miles, you're, you're not eligible. I mean, they work every way they can to manipulate the system, and then we have veterans dying. You know, and veterans' lives, like, they don't matter. The veterans' lives matter more than anybody. Amen. You know, because, because so when you have care. people that fight for your freedom, men and women that fight for your freedom, and put their lives on the line, have lost Sick limbs, stickers in there, no. have received Sick. cancer because of Agent Orange or other issues, you know, how can we ever treat people that way. You know, when we have the number one heart hospital here in the country, right, the Cleveland Clinic, number one in the world, and yet a veteran doesn't have the right to go there. They have to go to the VA, which a lot of times has some of the, you know, you know, obviously they don't get paid as much money, so the quality of the physician there sometimes is, is, is good. So, and one thing I do always try to say that's really important to me is that there's a lot of our veterans that like the VA especially in the southern part of the state. They've actually have, they, in Cincinnati, they have a pretty good VA system down there. It's attached to the University of Cincinnati. So that has actually worked out really well. Um, we've heard good reports out of our Columbus area. So it's not everywhere. And the other thing that I always make sure that I say is that there's a lot of good VA employees. Unfortunately, they get stuck there working with bad employees that nothing can be done to them. They can't be let go. They can't be removed from their position, and therefore you got you got really some really good employees there that work their hearts out for our veterans, right? And then what happens is that at the end of the day they got to go home frustrated and so tied up in knots inside because they saw fellow employees treat veterans bad, and there's nothing that can be done about it. You know, so on behalf of the VA employees that are our good ones, we need to get some help for them to get rid of the bad ones. Yeah. So that way their reputation isn't tarnished, you know, by the bad people, right? And so I do defend good VA employees because I don't think anybody does that. Even within our own organization, a lot of times we talk about all the issues with the VA, but I really make sure to, to, to note that there are good VA, you know, employees that really try their best to serve veterans, and, uh, and we're really thankful for them. Um, but, you know, when, when does a veteran's life matter? It doesn't reflect it in our society and in, our, in some of the things that are going on. We're trying to make a difference in that. We're trying to make a veteran's life matter. We don't want to see veterans dying because they're waiting to get health care. You know, we don't want to see that. We don't want to see veterans dying to make suicide because they come back home and they feel helpless and they don't know what they can do or where they belong. If we can help give veterans a, a, an avenue to feel important again and to be able to advocate, be able to take the fight, maybe it's in a different way, maybe it's in public policy, but if we can give that to them, that gives them purpose and meaning. Maybe they won't end up dead that night because they decided to commit suicide. 22 a day, we're seeing suicides from veterans. You know, because they, they, they struggle. It's a big transition, you know, from pretty much following orders and, you know, having your game plan for the day laid out for you to all of a sudden, what do I do for the day? Um, and there's so many different issues and so many different, uh, the, you know, whether it's drugs, whether it's alcohol. Um, there's so many different reasons and, and different things that, that uh, the transition creates. And so, you know, we're trying to, to, to have an avenue uh, for veterans to make their life matter. Um, and one of the other things that we deal with is that in most, of, most of the time in the military, you know, men and women are taught to be apolitical, don't be engaged. You know, and, and a lot of times what we, when the stories that we hear repeatedly come back from the men and women we talk to, is that, you know, they hate anything to do with public policy because public policy is what kept them from doing their job when they were in the military. Some stupid bureaucrat or whatever wouldn't would let me do what I needed to do to actually accomplish the job. And therefore, when they come back, they just hate anything to do with public policy. And in fact, if you looked at the, at the numbers, only 57% of veterans vote. It's amazing. 
because they're that disgusted and they, they want to get away from the trumpet so much. And so what we're trying to do is we're trying to say to veterans, give them hope, make their life matter, right? And um, and say, come and re-engage and let's do something about all that all that anger you had while you were in there. Let's help your guys that are in there now by coming and help us deal with public policy now. So so that's some of the things that we're doing and uh, we support anybody who fights for freedom. Um, we, you know, we're not just VA stuff exclusively. Our ideas are to, um, we've had teaching classes across the state and our, our thing is that there's almost in every single person that's in here, you're fighting for freedom. You have your issue, what matters to you, right? You have an issue that's, that's inside you, that's your issue. And what we're trying to do that's different with our grassroots and what we're trying to do across the state is we're not going to do your issue for you. But what we are going to do is help you do your issue. So it's kind of like instead of giving you a fish and taking care of your issue for you, we're going to teach you to fish. So we've gone across the state and we've met with many people and it's a, everybody's got their issue. It's from one little thing they're working on in their community, maybe uh, something they're working on in their township or their school board, uh, maybe it's a life issue, maybe it's uh, you know a, a fiscal issue somewhere with taxes or whatever. But if you're out there fighting a the fight, we want to support you. And what we do is we say, okay, and this was an example. We had a boot camp down in uh, um, Cincinnati, and one of the gentlemen came forward, and his his uh, son uh, was at Fort Hood during the Fort Hood Hood shootings, and then afterwards he ended up uh, committing suicide. And so, you know, he was really concerned, and, he, and his mission in life and his issue was he, he thought that his son should receive a Purple Heart for what happened there at Fort Hood. And he wasn't receiving that. So he had been, you know, taking a lot of time. And, like, every day he called the congressman's office. He kept trying to bug them. And, you know, he kept faxing them and doing all these different things. And he wasn't getting anywhere. In fact, he became, like, the pain. Oh, it's, you know, he's on the phone again. You know, you know how that happens, right? So he was being ineffective. So what we tried to do is that we, so we, we actually went out in the audience with him. And we sat down with him and said, how can we make, you know, your, your son's life matter, Right. Um, and what happened to him. And so what we did was we said, okay, based on what we've taught today, based on what we're teaching you, what we're doing, and how we're going to utilize volunteers and, and your help with what we're doing, how can you apply that to your situation? You know, how can you take these, these tactics, these strategies that we're, we're in, uh, you know, putting into place for us to make a difference in your issue, what your issue is, right? So, you know, so, so he was making these calls every day. So what, from what you learned from us, what can you do different? So, for an example, what we were teaching at, at that particular uh, class was that instead of calling a, a, a congressman 100 times, call 100 people and get the, those 100 people to call a congressman, right? So instead of you making the call, you end up getting somebody that's maybe the car dealer down the street that happens to donate money to call for you, right? So now you've got this big group of people. And one of the things that we talk about and we do a lot with our team here is that we, we've actually customized our volunteerism to the individual. So in every other aspect of our life, what do we do? We, we customize what kind of sandwich we want, what we want on it, what kind of, we want, how, what kind of coffee we want. You know, you name it, we pretty much what kind of music, what TV channel we want, right? We customize our lives. But one of the things that we found in volunteerism that no one's ever customized volunteerism. So we actually have a whole list of things that we offer people to do with us. And so in teaching this gentleman about, you know, having people call, calling is one thing, reaching out to people to call, but we kind of utilize our eight different ways of volunteering. Say, okay, so now you have somebody that on behalf of you that does social media and keeps posting things on social media. Somebody's making letters to the editor. Somebody's making doing phone calls. Some people are going door to door. Some people are holding events for you. So now you create this holistic approach around your issue, right? So now instead of him just calling one day and wearing out fax machines, now he's got 100 people calling. He's got social media everywhere. He's got every time you go to an event, there's, there's this issue, issue out in front of everybody, right? So now you're gaining momentum, right? Because now this is, it's everywhere. And you've got a lot of people engaged. And now all of a sudden, when you start to actually cause the pressure, what happens to people? They start to respond because they don't want people angry because they want reelected, right? So it's a matter of how do you actually be effective to make sure that whatever your issue is, and, and then you can use the same concepts for you got an issue with uh, flooding in your in your in your area with uh, something you're going to go to your township. You can by putting a good holistic approach into place, 
you can actually be really effective. And what we haven't had the ability to do, especially as conservatives, is because our funding is different. Our funding is, is, is mostly given from billionaires and big dollar donors. They come in during election cycles, pump a lot of money in, and then the election's over and they leave. Whereas the left, what they do is they stay there permanently. They have a permanent infrastructure. Any, every day, certain letters go out to the editor. It's a whole infrastructure. It constantly happens, right? So, so what we've seen then is that you know we only work thinking that electing somebody is going to accomplish stuff instead of governing during the governance time, which is actually even more effective. And I know Janet can speak to that, can't you? <laughs> yeah, right. So you know, it's it's during governance that really is when it's most important and most uh, for your for your uh, pressure to be in place. And that's something that we're doing. We're a permanent we're permanent in Ohio now with our team, and we're building a permanent infrastructure. And that's why we're going out into the grassroots of the conservative side, saying we're going to get this right and we're going to actually be effective because we're going to start to build the infrastructure that the left's had for a long time. And fortunately for us, we have some donors and some people that have seen the light and recognize that it's not just come on in during election cycles and you know then go out and wait for the next one to come back around, but they've understood the fact that you can own all the different, you can have conservatives own all the governorships, all the state houses, everywhere around, and still you can be moving left. I mean, think about what we've gone through in the last few years. Do you, under, do you realize that conservatives, or quote-unquote conservatives, actually control almost most of the country with, with the states and everything like that? But do you feel us, or do you guys feel like we're moving right? Do you feel like we're not moving left, even? If we, you know, if it's just not happening. And why is that, right? Because they put that permanent infrastructure in. Because, you know, they fight for what they want all the time. We only fight during cycles, and that's what's changing. And, and so, in, in helping this gentleman, you know, uh, when he got done after we shared the ideas with him on his issue with making his, son, or his son's life matter, um, he walked away a different guy. He walked away with a completely different approach. And we were real thankful that we were able to do that. And that's what we're trying to do across the country. Even though we at Concerned Veterans have our issues that we are working on, we can't work on everybody's issues because we got our own issues. But one of the things that we're really big on with our team is that we want to accomplish multiple goals with whatever we're doing. So if we're trying to get a VA health care uh, bill passed, okay, what's the other three or four things we can accomplish at the same time while we're getting that done? How can we help the individual people grow? And what we've seen in a lot of cases, and where we've failed in the conservative side, whether it's in a social conservative group, a life group, whether it's in a liberty group, is that we, we've, we've had people come together for our issues, but we've never taken the time to invest in their issues. And the reality of it is, think back to this case with this gentleman with his son, right? So let's say, for example, at Concerned Veterans, we're actually trying to um, make sure that veterans' lives matter from a policy standpoint when it comes to their health care. So by us going out and, and helping that gentleman with his son's issue, and he goes out now and he implements what we shared with him. And now all of a sudden he goes and gets a hundred people to make phone calls for him. He he starts a social media group. You know, he starts letters to the editor. You know, he's he's got all these different holistic approach in place. Now when I go to him and I ask him, hey, would you help us with our uh, our issue that we're dealing with with trying to get veterans health care passed, he'll say to me, you know, not only will we help you, but I got a whole team that'll help you now. Right? Because we helped him develop it and gave him the, the footprint to be able to work with his issue. And it just became a multiplying effect for what we can accomplish now. Because we don't just have him, we have his whole team that he can actually put into place for what our issue is. That's where we've been really wrong in a lot of our groups with, with what we've done on the conservative side. When we get focused on what our issue is, and we don't actually work out to empower individual people and build each individual person into a, a, a powerhouse himself. Because when you do that and you invest in people, then all of a sudden when you have something come up, you, you're a powerhouse. Because you actually have this huge network and a huge organization of people that whatever issue it is that you guys have of what makes life matter to you, you, you have tools and techniques and, and ways to actually to work with those. So that's what some stuff that's going on around the state. We have been in Dayton area, Cincinnati, um, Toledo, 
um, Columbus area. We've been all over the state, and we are really building. And it's in the beginning stages, but we are really excited um, about what we're seeing and the progress that we're starting to make. We're, we're, we understand it's a long process. The left has been on the ground for a long time. Um, you know, they've had systems and bricks and mortar put in place for a long time. And um, we know we have to start somewhere. And I can tell you in Ohio, and the results and the support we're getting na nationwide of what we're seeing by looking at this from a different approach, and our results and our numbers and our effectiveness is through the roof. And so it's exciting to actually be here, and um, I appreciate you thinking about veterans' lives, why they matter. Um, Jeremiah, if you would like to add a few things from our team. Uh, yeah, sure. So uh, as Rich mentioned, I'm the Deputy State Director here in Ohio. Um, I've been working with CBA for about uh, two and a half years now. Um, I, was, uh, I, I did six years in the Army. I was deployed uh, 2012 to 2013. So I was actually deployed um, during, during the election process. And I'll talk about that in a second. Um, but then when I got back from, uh, from deployment, I was, I was kind of looking for the next step in, in, in uh, my, my, my life and my, my family's life. I've got, uh, I got a wife and, and three kids. And uh, so we're just kind of, what's, what's the next step in our life? And I came across CBA and uh, I've loved uh, every minute of it since. Um, and it's really, you know, as Rich mentioned, I mean, in my own life, it really has been able to give some, some purpose and all the things that when I was overseas during the 2012 election cycle, I mean, we had all sorts of issues getting ballots to us. We had all sorts of issues getting the ballots back. And then once we sent them out, it was like, all right, they just went into this black hole. Did they get counted? Probably not. Um, and, and so we had a bunch of people over there that were... Um, that we're wanting to get engaged in the process. Everyone in the military has an opinion about everything, um, and they'll, you know, if you ask them, they'll they'll tell you their opinion. But um, but when it actually came to doing something about it, um, there was a lot of uh, specifically with voting. There's a lot of things that kept us, that held us back from actually voting. Which mentioned kind of the apolitical nature uh, of, of this nature that they want to keep. It's it's emphasized by the fact it was very difficult to vote when we were overseas. Um, and so there comes a point. If you've been in the military so long, it's it's uh, it's almost just it's almost just easier just not to do it. Um, and, and and I saw that personally. And um, and so and so when I got back and I started working with CBA, I was I was pleasantly surprised that as an organization, uh, we weren't just about veterans' issues. You know, the most important aspect of our name is concerned veterans for America. We're for America. We're a bunch of veterans, military families, and civilian supporters that um, that love this country, that love our veterans, and want to want to see our country on, on a better path. And uh, and so, working with tons of veterans and their families and supporters of our cause over the past couple of years, um, it's been very encouraging. You know, everything we do, Rich, Rich touched on in a bit. Everything we do is for multiple purposes. We believe that veterans' lives matter. We believe that that the VA is is um, is not treating our veterans right. We need to do better on that front, absolutely. But it's more than that. You know, it, it's about it's about veterans that come back from from overseas that don't have a sense of purpose, that feel like their voice isn't being heard. They've got an opinion on the, on an issue, but they can't actually do something about it. They don't see the they they don't like the direction that our country is going in, but they can't do something about it. And so we we uh, started as an organization to kind of fill that void. Um, not a service organization, but an advocacy organization to get those people involved, actually be a backbone, actually be a, uh, a support system uh, that, these, that these veterans actually have a voice. And as an example, in April, we sent 150 veterans to D.C. To, um, uh, to advocate on these issues from all over the country. And these are just regular, regular Joes. They've got you know, full-time jobs. They've got families that are willing to take you know, three or four days out of their week in April to, to head to D.C. with us. And we're able to, actually able to sit down with representatives and senators and their staff to say, here are the issues that veterans care about. Not some policy wonk in D.C. talking on our behalf. And not just you know, going to their district office, which is important. 
um, but you know, getting put with a staffer that can ignore us. No, we, we called it Vets on the Hill. We stormed the hill, so to speak. We had 150 veterans uh, in these office buildings. I mean, that was, a, that was a force that could not be ignored. And so when we sat down with these staffers, when we sat down with these representatives, they listened. And that's what our organization is about. It's about uh, not just gathering veterans and their families and people who support our cause just for the sake of having membership numbers, but actually activating them towards a goal to say, all right, these are issues that we care about. These are issues that we've been, you know, um, frankly um, upset about for a long time. Um, and now we finally have an opportunity to do it. And uh, it's about, you know, our mission is to stand for the freedom and prosperity that we fought for overseas as veterans. And, uh, and so it's not just about VA issues, it's not just about veterans issues. When we, talk about, when we talk about the VA, when we talk about choice, it's a freedom issue. It's a matter of taking care of the people that fought for us overseas, that defend our freedom every day overseas. What are we doing to continue that fight at home? So it's about freedom, it's about prosperity, it's about making sure that, um, that hypocritical politicians are being held accountable for, whether that's at the VA, we'll be the first to tell you, or it's like, all right, you as our representative ran on the fact that veterans' lives matter. You ran on the fact that veterans' issues are important, but now what are you doing about it? All right, well, you didn't vote for this bill last year. You didn't co-sponsor this bill. You didn't, you know, we've got a VA Accountability Act going through right now, passed the House, it's being blocked in the Senate. The President has said that he will, he will veto it if it gets on his desk, and it's a very basic bill. If you're not doing your job at the VA, you should be gone. And that's true for any of us in our jobs. Any one of us. We don't do our job, we're not there the next day, right? Um, but unfortunately, that's not the case at the VA. So we believe that veterans' lives matter. We believe that the principles that we fought for overseas, the principles that we believe in, the reason that I enlisted, that those are reasons that we should continue to fight stay in the fight. So um, that's what we're about. That's what we're trying to do. Um, we believe that um, veterans' lives matter and they should have a voice in these issues and should be able to have uh, an avenue to actually um, get stuff done and make a positive difference in the direction of our country. Yeah, and I, I also want to add something to that as well is that if you came and, and spent time with our team and spent time with our volunteers, you'll see that a lot of them are not veterans. In fact, the majority of them are not veterans, but they want to participate, and we welcome everybody to our team. And we have, uh, I would say, the, uh, the, the foremost team in Ohio now. And what's nice about it is that you have people that really, there's not much more of a rallying call than actually having people rally for veterans. I mean, and so, especially patriotic, faith-based people. And so, you know, by coming together, and utilizing the, some of the training that a lot of veterans have had, you know, now all of a sudden you've got a conservative movement that's actually pretty powerful. Because you've got a lot of well-trained guys and gals, you know, that have a lot of tools and techniques that haven't been utilized, really, since they were in, in service, coming back alive again. And then you've got a lot of, you know, patriotic Americans, Americans coming with them, and it makes a great mesh. And it gives you a great army of people, and, and the talent that you get out of that, to me, and I've been in, in this game a long time, it's phenomenal. And we have one of the guys that works for us down in, uh, um, in Columbus. He's a Special Forces, CIA, Army Ranger. Uh, he's been in some of the most elite places with some of the most elite teams in our country. He's one of our team. He's helping us in the grassroots now. He knows how to recruit assets. You know, you spent a lot of time in North Africa recruiting assets, going through the techniques, the training of how you do that, how you, you know. Now we have that talent on our side for a change. It's amazing. And the things that, like, you know, it's, uh, you know I'm just amazed every time we have a, 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 a statewide meeting and everybody comes together on the staff. The, the talent in, in the room, you know, to train us, we don't have to go get an outside trainer. There's trainers in our state. From the, from the training they, they brought with them from their times in service. And not every single person of our staff is a military guy either. We have some civilians and patriotic Americans that are on our staff because we find that the mix of the two, when you put the two together, people that have, some, have an understanding of policy, grassroots, political aspects and political things, when you put them together with the talent of military guys and you put the two together, it's a powerhouse. 
It's amazing the powerhouse that it is. And I, I've, I've just been so surprised at what kind of a force it is. And our team here in Ohio um, is, is an awesome team. And I would really welcome you guys to just come spend a little time with the team and see that we're out there trying to you know, fight for freedom. And we're trying to help you also in your own life for whatever issue of freedom that you're fighting for, be effective. And that's what we hope to actually accomplish with what we're doing. And veterans' lives matter. And we want to make sure that we do that. We appreciate your support.